We're going to be talking now about motion along a straight line, rectilinear motion. So you can see here in our picture, we have a particle P at time T and at time T plus delta T. So in that amount of time, this particle has traveled this distance. So we're going to start defining some of our terms here. So we're going to measure position as a scalar s, which is going to be a function of time. So we're going to write that as s of t. Now, we know that velocity is the derivative of the position with respect to time. And if you want to go back and look at some of my previous videos where we talk about this in curvilinear motion in a little bit more detail, um, I'll link those down below. But we can write velocity as the derivative of position with respect to time. Now, acceleration, we can write this a couple different ways. So we know that acceleration is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time, but it's also true that we can say that acceleration is the second derivative of the position with respect to time. So we can write that as So we can even break that one step further and say that acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to position times the velocity. So let's write that out. So dt equals ds over dv. So a equals dv dt and this equals dv over dsv and we can say velocity oops we can say acceleration equals velocity times the derivative velocity with respect to position so we have a couple different ways that we can write acceleration. And a lot of these we've seen before from physics or just other classes. But this last one is pretty new. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, if you're confused here, we basically can say V equals dS dt. So we know that if we just switch our variables, that will give us d equals ds over v. So let's look at an example problem now. So in this problem, we have a freight train travels at v equals 60 times 1 minus e to the negative t feet per second, where t is the elapsed time in seconds. Determine the distance traveled in 3 seconds and the acceleration at this time. So the first thing we're going to do is not panic, and we're going to write t at 0 seconds is going to be equal to 0. It's our initial time. t final, we're going to write as 3 seconds. We know this expression here for velocity. And we're going to assume the position at zero seconds is going to be zero feet and our final position that is what we are going to find out now we also want to keep in mind that a equals dv dt like we just learned and v equals ds dt So let's start by using one of these expressions. So V equals ds dt. So let's take the integral from 0 to 3 V dt. 
and that's going to equal 0 to 3 or I'm sorry, zero to our final position, ds. So we have our time, t0, tf, and we have s0 and sf, of course. So let's simplify this even further by putting in what we know. So zero to sf, ds is going to be equal to 0 to 3 of our velocity expression. Let's put that in dt. So this really becomes at this point pretty much just a calc problem. So I'm going to save you some of that pain and just write sf is going to be equal to 0. Or I'm sorry, we're just going to write s. S is going to be equal to 60 e to the negative t plus t. And we're going to evaluate that between 0 and 3. So at 3 seconds, evaluating this expression is going to give us S equals 123 feet. So look at that. We've already solved one part. Of our problem. So all that's left to do now is to find the acceleration at this time. So again, let's go back to what we know. So A equals dv dt. And let's just start by putting in what we know for V. So d over dt of 60, 1 minus e to the negative t is going to give us simplify that's going to solve out to be 60 negative e to the negative t equals a so let's just plug in we know our final time is three seconds and that's the time we want to evaluate our acceleration at so we're going to just plug in 60 e to the negative 3 equals a and that is going to give us three feet per second squared. Actually, it comes out to about 2.9, but we're gonna just round up to three. And there we go, that's one problem solved. All right, so let's look at another one. So when a train is traveling along a straight track at two meters per second, it begins to accelerate at A equals 60 times V to the negative 4 meters per second squared, where V is in meters per second. Determine its velocity V and the position 3 seconds after the acceleration. All right, so again, let's just start by writing what we know. So we're going to say V0 is 2 meters per second. And our time 0 is going to just be 0 seconds. Our final time is going to be 3 seconds. Our final velocity, we are going to try to find out. And we know that A equals this expression here. And we also know from what we just learned that A equals dv dt. And we also found a new expression v dv over ds. So, Let's get started. So if A equals dv dt, then we can also say that dt equals dv over A. And we can simplify this by writing 0 to 3 dt, which is our initial and final time right here, so t0. And this is our tf. And that is going to equal to vf, which is our v0 and our final v, of course, of 1 over 60 v to the negative 4. And this is just right here. This is just our a expression. We're just plugging in what we know dv. All right, so 
this is going to come out to be 3 equals 1 over 300 v is 5 minus 32 when simplified and that's just calculus nothing fancy there and basically just solving for v v is going to be equal to 3.93 meters per second at time t equals three seconds so that's great so we have already solved one part of the problem so now let's look at the position after three seconds so let's use this new a equals v dv ds expression so we can write this a little bit simplified as ds equals v dv over a so we can start plugging in what we know for a and that's going to give us ds equals 1 over 60 v to the fifth dv so now let's just take the integral from 0 to our sf so this is just our initial position to our final position of ds equals 1 over 60 2 sorry 2 to the 3.93 which is our new v almost forgot so we have v0 vf and we just found that vf right above times v to the fifth dv so that is just going to work out to be s equals 1 over 60 times v to the 6 over 6 between 2 and 3.93 and just again calculus and by magic we get s equals 9.9 .9 meters so so far rectilinear motion is pretty straightforward um just a lot of kind of reinforcing you know our integrals and our calc that we've learned but um really just keep in mind these kind of expressions that we have just went over in the beginning because starting by writing down what you know and the equations that you know are really going to be what gets you through the problem because if you look you really aren't given too much you're given only a couple pieces of information so really we're going to just use the expressions that we already know to solve these problems going forward. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That really helps support my channel and helps me continue making videos for you guys. I'll see you next time.